Okay, so in lab, we talked about the eye. And so you need to know the different parts of the eye that were labeled. So what does the yellow represent in this diagram? The retina. And the retina is nervous tissue. So generally, yellow is nervous tissue. And what does the outer white part represent? The sclera. And white, in this case, is due to collagen fibers that are found in connective tissue. So connective tissue is generally white in color. So the middle layer is that vascular layer, that's the choroid. And in us, we do not have a reflective membrane. So when that comes in and then reflects right back out the pupil, what do you see? When you take a picture and it, the light is reflecting right out, back out of the camera? Red eye, right? So we do not have the bright eye shine, like green or blue, that some organisms have. Generally, organisms that are nocturnal. But we even saw it in cow eye that has to be a little bit of wary of creatures that might be preying upon it in the early morning and in their early evening, right? So they have um, what is referred to as the tapa lucida. So what is this structure located right here called? The lens. The lens. And one of the really interesting things about the lens is, is that it can change shape um, and allow us to see things that are distant versus close up. And in lab, that is called what? Uh, no, what was the ability to see distant and then close up called? Accommodation. So you can accommodate, right? Looking far away versus looking close up. And so if you look at here, you can see that there's these little ligaments that are actually t attaching the muscle, which is called the ciliary body, to the lens. And so you probably had to kind of pop the lens out. The lens in the cow was clouded because what happens is that lens is composed of protein. And when you get clumping of the proteins, then you can get clouding of the eye. So this is an example of a person that has this problem. So you might have noticed this probably more frequently on animals because as they age, they tend to get what in their eyes? Cataracts, right? So cataracts is a clouding of the lenses due to the, pro, uh, um, the clumping of proteins. Now, this can actually be due to a genetically inherited um, disease. And then sometimes you actually see uh, cataracts in juveniles, right? In young people, in children, for example. And some breeds of dogs, even like the golden retriever, is one that tends to have that running in their lineage. And because they're inbred, it tends to be really um, common. And so they have cataracts as puppies, and so they go blind really early on. So the way that they treat the lens is because the lens doesn't have a circulatory system. You can just go in there and pop it out, and then you can replace it generally with an artificial lens. But you could theoretically replace it with a lens from another individual, and generally the, the, there's no rejection of it by the immune system because there's no um, circulation to it. So this is um, different from another problem that is, shows up on your review sheet, which is called glaucoma. So glaucoma has to do with intraocular eye pressure. And this is due to a buildup of the aqueous humor. So you'll remember that aqueous means water. So this was not the gel-like stuff, that's O, not the gel-like stuff in the eye, but this is actually the watery stuff. It gets produced and circulates, and it's close to the lens, 
So when you go to a doctor, what do they do to test that intraocular eye pressure? Did I already talk about this? I feel like I maybe I did. Okay. What do they do to test it? A puff of air, right? And so they can they can detect that. And remember that this is a big problem with people that have diabetes because they um, uh, sometimes can't regulate that eye pressure and they can actually lose eyesight, lose vision because of glaucoma. Okay. So we're gonna talk about the very last topic today, which is reproduction. And obviously this is really important. Um, we talked about um, the reproductive isolating mechanisms that keep species apart, and that a biological species is a group of individuals that can reproduce with each other and produce viable, fertile offspring. So we talked about reproduction as a characteristic of living organisms, and then we talked about it a little bit in terms of speciation. So we're going to talk about asexual reproduction and sexual. So I left a little space there. So asexual means without genetic recombination, without sex. So this is the production of clones. So the offspring are genetically identical to the parents. Now, we talked about this in the Cnidarians. So for example, we talked a little bit about the, um, the budding of the hydra and also um, the fact that the sea anemones can um, break apart and form colonies of clones. And so this is a Cnidarian. Remember that part of your final exam is going to be over a small portion of it, about 30%, I think, or 35% is going to be over what we covered since the last um, midterm. So you should recognize this as a Cnidarian. So this is um, producing another individual, and they are genetically identical. So what usually happens in this case is, is that the offspring fall or they remain close to the parents, so they don't disperse away. Because if the parent is doing well in that environment, then the offspring should do pretty well as in that environment as well. So this is another example of a sea anemone. And when they get too big, they actually just split. And we also looked at this in terms of the planaria. The planaria are also capable of just splitting into two. So you go from one individual to two genetically identical individuals. So there is another organism that um, is a little bit more similar to us that also has um, asexual reproduction, and these are the aphids. So aphids are arthropods, and they are insects that suck plant juices. Hence, they are kind of a pest species in terms of like getting them on your roses, right? Or other things they cause, they just kind of suck onto it. The other really interesting thing about aphids is, is that generally when you see ants crawling up a plant, up and down a tree, for example, or some other plant, oftentimes what they're doing is they're tending their herd of aphids at the top. So they will actually um, have a, um, the aphids and they actually milk them by um, stroking their uh, backsides. And then the aphids actually exude sugar water and feed the, the ants. And so they actually, ants and aphids have a mutualistic symbiotic relationship because the, the ants help to protect the aphids. But aphids can actually reproduce asexually um, and they give birth to live offspring. So the females just give birth to an offspring. It comes out alive, not as an egg and um, they reproduce that way, and they can also reproduce sexually. So I'm gonna show you just a short little video that talks about the, these two mechanisms, and I'm actually gonna see if 